so I thought I'd try out a new series of videos where I talk about some of my very early childhood games. Uh, basically like a let's play or a walkthrough because um, these games are so ingrained in my subconscious that I can pretty much play them anytime and beat them. And I thought why not start with Alex Kidd because I'm a glutton for punishment I guess. And this is one of my you know, very early childhood games. Uh, if, if not the first, it's definitely one of the first. Uh, and it's funny to think about considering how amazingly balls hard this game is and this isn't live footage it is a uh, it is a uh, pre-recorded which is why you could see me jumping around like an idiot there and this <laughs> this right here is about a, th a third of the game is these rock paper scissors duels where you enter these buildings and then you can play uh, an NPC opponent at rock paper scissors for a power up and I've left this one intact to showcase exactly what the gameplay is like. And as you can see, it is rock, paper, scissors. Uh, you choose from rock, paper, scissors in your little uh, thought bubble. And if you're wrong, you lose. And although it does say bet your life, it doesn't really mean you bet your life. It just means bet the 50 coins that you've got. So in that case, I lost. Didn't die, but I did lose monies. <laughs> so now... I made the decision really early that I wouldn't subject anyone to all of these rock paper scissors duels so I've sped them up uh, just to make it a little bit more tolerable. I mean there are ridiculous amounts of rock paper scissors in this game. So then I just I just won um, that game of rock paper scissors which allowed me to have this wonderful wonderful moon ring uh, which you do need as you can see here. It, uh, shoots out beams of moon or moonbeam crescent moons uh, and you do need it it's probably the most important item in the game if you don't have it you're probably screwed uh, as you can imagine having a long distance attack that can reach from one end of the screen to the other and kill anything in one hit pretty much is a really big advantage and the thing about the power-ups is you really do need to stock up on as many of them as possible. Uh, really important, and this is basically what the first level is for, is for stocking up on any items you might want. Uh, the moon ring being the most important and pretty much the only one you're going to want. Um, other than there is one other one. Uh, so. Right here is an example of a secret area and uh, there are a few secret areas in the game where you have to break blocks like uh, this one here that takes you back up to the surface. Uh, there are a few secret areas in the game, not too many from what I remember, um, but I do show off a couple of them. And usually in the secret areas you can find uh, those grey chests or the uh, weird brownish offset coloured chests that have special items in them, or, <laughs> as we'll see later, um, death, <laughs> which is nice. Uh, the thing about... <laughs> yeah, the thing about this level is um, you really do have to stock up on as many of the coins as possible, uh, so you can really get ready for the rest of the game. This, this level here is really um, just an introduction to the game. And... Here is the, well, the, yeah, I'll say the second most important item in this game are these necklaces. And what these necklaces do is they allow you to predict uh, what the outcome of the rock, paper, scissors for your opponent is going to be. It shows in real time their choice and it flips between either, you know, rock, paper, scissors and you can adjust your, um, your choice as you're seeing their choice. Uh, it'll uh, become clearer later. Uh, but that is another one of the most important items. Uh, the only two important items you need in this game are the moon ring and these necklaces. And here I am just trying to get as many of these necklaces as possible and losing <laughs> two ties and a loss. I uh, lost 500 just like that. So I think I only make it out with one necklace in this level. Uh, this is a staff, it is pretty much worthless, allows you to fly, and that's about it. 
Uh, there's no real reason to fly. <laughs> uh, not with that staff anyway, which you'll see later. Uh, this is the second level. Uh, a really frustrating level when I was a kid, I remember that. Uh, there's uh, another power-up. Uh, the moon buggy. Oh, the little buggy, the little 4x4 buggy that you can ride. And <laughs> for some reason, I just really, really wanted to get that buggy. So, <laughs> I just wander around collecting as many coins as possible. These little gophers are whatever they are supposed to be, prairie dogs. Horrible things. And here I am, just tying and losing, of course. <laughs> it is ridiculous just how much luck is involved in these games. It's really unfair when you think about it. I mean, look at that. Four losses in a row. Yeah, and for some reason, I just really, really want to get this buggy. I think it's just for review purposes, like in case I wanted to show off the buggy for whatever reason. Uh, some hedgehogs, another horrible enemy. Pretty much everything in this game is horrible in its own way. And of course, uh, one hit deaths um, that are a staple of this game. So here is the moon buggy, and here I am just casually riding it. You can go faster. Uh, this is the slowest speed. Uh, you're pretty much invincible on it, which is nice. You can break any blue, uh, any blue blocks and you know blue spheres. The red spheres are unbreakable, and if you do touch them with anything, <laughs> except for the pogo stick, I think it breaks. So it's really best not to use anything in this game. It's more of a hindrance really. Uh, they're fun to use for like for a, for a few chuckles but they've got no practical use really <laughs> because you can never use them because there's no way you can use them. Like uh, in this prairie field you can use it because there's like a flat surface but there's no other flat surfaces in the game. <laughs> so using the moon buggy is almost worthless in any other level but this one. Uh, here I am, just tempting fate, because I'm crazy. Remember that bird giving me so much trouble when I was a kid. Uh, but yeah, the moon buggy uh, breaks if it hits a red sphere, um, but you're invincible otherwise, so I suppose that's something. Here is another example of the secret areas. and It's, it's always good to, if you can, uh, go into all the secret areas because there are a lot of coins and usually either a free life um, Which you're about to see right in there Or it can be a necklace sometimes so you want to try and get as many of these chests as possible um, the thing about these chests is I'm not exactly sure how it works, but usually you get one good grey chest it either has a life in it or a necklace and then every every chest after that that's grey is full of bombs uh, which there are quite a few grey chests in this level so you'll get to see quite a few of them there's me trying to find secret secret areas don't know why I did um, I don't remember there ever being a secret entrance there but you know, I thought I'd try it out just in case um, I do remember this level giving me a particularly tough time when I was a kid because of all the uh, vultures uh, specifically. Uh, these things are really evil. Uh, it probably looks a lot easier than it is just because of the moon ring. If you don't have the moon ring, this game is such... <laughs> they're, they're the bombs. Um, you can pretty much avoid them every time so long as you're careful. They never stay underneath them. And the bombs themselves don't actually hurt you, only the explosion does, so you can get hit with the bombs. So yeah, there are a lot of um, great chests in this level in particular, but pretty much after you get the first positive item out of it, that's all you get. I think there's a few exceptions, uh, but not in this level. <laughs> uh, so here's the end of the level, and I'm trying to get a helicopter, which I fail, of course. 
uh, uh, the helicopter which I'll show off in the next level. So yeah, the uh, second level is pretty straightforward. Uh, you can pretty much avoid most hazards if you stay on the top. Although the you know without the moon ring, you are going to have a problem dodging things. Uh, so this is a splashy sea, a really quick level. This probably can be completed in about 20 seconds if you just go from one side to the other. Um, but I decided to show off some of the helicopter uh, mechanics here. You have to mash the button as quickly as possible, the um, A button I think, just the jump button. Uh, that propels you and it's really horrible, I would not recommend it. <laughs> uh, you really do have to press that button uh, quickly to get any kind of lift out of that helicopter. Uh, if you hit the water with the helicopter, it that it is destroyed and you lose it. If you hit any of, uh, if you get hit by an enemy, you don't die. Just the uh, helicopter gets destroyed. I'm not sure if you can hit red blocks with the helicopter. I think uh, that's a no as well. Uh, one of the few enemies there that is not killed in one hit. Uh, three hits for that big fish. But as so long as you know, it's fine. Uh, the water physics in this game are pretty horrendous. Um, I don't know if it comes across too well in the footage, but um, you're constantly being pulled up, so you have to hold down on the D-pad, otherwise you just fly all over the place, so you're constantly having to um, manoeuvre yourself and uh, keep a good handle on the D-pad. Uh, it really doesn't look it, but it is really a struggle to keep under the water. If I, I honestly, I say if you can get away with it, just skim the surface of the water, and you'll be done with this level in about 30 seconds tops. Uh, for some reason, here I'm playing for the cape. Uh, the cape makes you invincible. I have no idea why I'm playing for the cape because I never use it. I've never used it. It's not really all that, uh, I never really found it all that useful. I suppose it's some way, I suppose you could use it to blaze through a level. I don't think it lasts that long to be honest. I think it lasts about 10 seconds. Uh, so I wanted to get a few capes there for some reason, don't know why, but I have them. I never use them, <laughs> but I've got them. Uh, here I am just, I, I can't believe I didn't die there to be honest. Uh, but yeah, there's the end of the level. A uh, really short, sweet level. Um, can be a horrible level if you decide to try and go for all the things like I did. But here is the level I remember. One of the worst levels as a kid. It really is one of those games that gets tougher and tougher as you go along. And this is one of the worst. Um, just because of... There, if you stick to the um, lower level, if you stick to the bottom and just run across from left to right, uh, there's a lot of scorpions that come out of the ground and they are a really horrible enemy. Uh, here I am trying to be very careful with the helicopter because if you hit anything with the helicopter from above, uh, it breaks. Um, the helicopter is actually a really good cheat item because you can <laughs> a swastika there or manji. It's probably a manji, uh, but you the helicopter is a really useful item because you can pretty much blaze away, blaze through all the levels as long as you're careful. Uh, that's probably the key word. You have to be as careful as you can be in this game because this game does not mess around. Uh, if if I were to break the helicopter at any portion of this level here, I would probably fall headfirst into a death trap of some kind. There's probably all sorts of horrible stuff down there. Um, I know from experience because I've done it. Uh, there are evil deadly... There's a bird there, probably land right on top of that. Uh, there's evil land scorpions, more bombs there, probably bombs in that one too. <laughs> yep, bombs in this one. Uh, there's quite a lot of large ra um, 
radius on the bombs as well from what I remember. Uh, so if you you really want to be as far away as possible. Uh, some camel pixel art up here. Here is where I find this very suspicious looking... Um, I'm not sure what it is. It looks like an arrow to me. It could be a pickaxe, I suppose. But I had the feeling that there was some kind of secret here, so I'm jumping here. If I had the staff, I would probably use that uh, to see if I could go further up. Uh, the helicopter doesn't go past the uh, black border line, so I can't use that to check. Uh, whether this is a secret or not, I have no clue. Um, I jump at it for a while just to see if there is anything there, and there isn't. Uh, whether or not this is a secret or just a red herring, I don't know. But either way, <laughs> I, I guess I take my ring off there because I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to die, which is probably true. Uh, again, it doesn't look like I'm struggling that hard with the controls, but trust me, um, I am. Uh, that's probably a really bad idea, <laughs> what I just did as well. Don't try that if you decide to play this game. Do not punch these ants. <laughs> um, uh, the hit detection in this game is suspect at best. It always seems like... Um, if Unless your fist or foot comes into contact with an enemy, any other pixel from any other part of your body will kill you. Um, the hit detection in this game is probably one of the worst parts about it, which is why you need the moon ring, because if you're trying to fight stuff hand to hand, uh, more often than not, you're just gonna, you're just gonna lose. Um, unless you are deadly precise with your fist or your kick, you're just gonna lose every time. Here's another example of the OP nature of the helicopter. Um, <laughs> hey, free life. One of the chests that isn't trying to kill me. But yeah, uh, it doesn't look it, but it's tough. I'm, <laughs> I'm constantly smashing uh, the A button uh, to just try and keep myself afloat. And obviously, as you can imagine, um, trying to mash it to try and maintain a, a specific height is not easy either. Uh, so that was the uh, first part of the level. Uh, there, you just saw two mummies on top of each other. They'd like to play that trick. Um, uh, having a one mummy stacked on top of another mummy so that when you punch it, you think you've killed it, but really, there's another one underneath just waiting to get you. Uh, this is sta uh, part two of the Egypt level and it's not too bad this level I think it's probably worse because it's confined uh, there's an example of getting a necklace in a chest uh, right after a life which is not common <laughs> but yeah like I said I've really no idea how the chest thing works um, I'm not sure if it's certain chests have power-ups and some don't. I'm not sure if it's, um, if you get one, uh, the others are dangerous. Not a clue. Uh, there's two up there, both bombs. I can pretty much guarantee it. I don't know if they're always bombs, but I break them anyway, just in case. Uh, one of the things about this game is you pretty much need to get as many lives and of the, those necklaces as possible. Uh, which will become abundantly clear very soon. Uh, because in a second, I have my very first boss fight. Uh, and I'm guessing you're wondering how I could possibly have a boss fight in this game. Uh, there's no epic uh, side scroller um, bosses where I have to dodge and, you know, plow it with moon ring beams. Sadly, not. <laughs> There's another example of those asshole mummies. Right, so here's where I equip the necklace because in this rock, paper, scissors duel, because of course the boss fight is a rock, paper, scissors duel, uh, if you lose this duel, you lose a life. And there's nothing you can do about it. 
So using the necklace is absolutely critical. Um, <laughs> there I was beating the boss. For some reason, they expect you to have do-overs. They don't give you do-overs if you lose. Uh, so the necklace, really important because you half the time you're going to lose. That's if you've got three lives, the chances of losing all three lives are very high. And if you lose, obviously, if, if you lose all three lives, that's it. Game over. So, as many necklaces as possible. Um, <laughs> this is probably my most hated level. The level that gave me the most nightmares as a kid. Uh, High Ho Forest. And it's all because of these little asshole dwarf axemen. Whatever you want to call them. The bees. They're horrible. There's monkeys. They're horrible. They can spring on you at any time. There's one there. Uh, they can be either side of those trees and just come down on you and you've no idea where they're going to come from, where, they're, where they are, which trees they're in. But the worst part about this, uh, this level uh, is definitely the Axemen. Um, and funnily enough, until recently I actually pictured the Axemen differently. Uh, if you look at the Axemen there, uh, they're wearing a hockey mask, like Jason Voorhees for some reason. But the way I've always viewed them is the eye hole, which I thought up until very recently was actually the mouth. Um, and the two black straps were the eyes. And if you look at it that way, it looks horrifying. And that's how I pictured it as a kid. Absolutely horrifying. Monkey almost killed me. I remember that. Uh, because some of these trees are halt, you know, you can pass through, some of them are solid objects. I mean, look at that! It looks like the mouthpiece is covered in blood. <laughs> if you picture it the way I thought. Look at that! It's unbelievable. There, yeah, monkey coming out of the tree. Um, being incredibly lucky with these boxes. Um, here, I know the boss is coming. So I'm edging closer um, because if you if you accidentally move too far forward and you're not ready with the necklace, then tough. Uh, the cutscene starts and you're in, and that's all there is to it. So yeah, that's High Ho Forest. Not too bad. Uh, the air is especially bad. Um, skirting through the level on the helicopter isn't really a viable option as much as it was in the Egypt level because there's tons more stuff up there, tons of bees, tons of enemies, uh, more obstacles. Uh, this is pretty much the halfway point of the game, uh, this tropics town, and this is pretty much the midway point breather of the game. If you've made it to this point, this is kind of like your reward. Um, you're given loads of shops again, pretty much I think every item is available at this, uh, in this level. And I think, yep, I go into all of them, and of course I only want one item, or two if the necklace is here. Uh, but I'm the only item you're going to want is the, the ring, and I would suggest I go for a staff here because I just don't have one. Uh, which I do try to make use of later, but... Or do I have one? No, I can't remember. But I do try to make use of it later, but that doesn't work out, which you'll see. Um, but yeah, if I recommend if you do get to this level and you've got tons of money left over, save it all for moon rings, just in case. And uh, one of the tricks to this game is if you are using a moon ring and you even have the slightest inkling that you're going to die, unequip it. Because if you, if you die with it unequipped, you don't lose it. But if you die with it equipped, then it's lost. So try to anticipate death, I suppose, as much as possible. And when you can't anticipate death, this is what the spare moon rings are for. And that does happen to me. I haven't died yet. But it's coming, believe me, it's coming. 
And here I am just, I saw the end of the level and I want to get as many of these rings as possible. And there I am, losing again. Ah, this game, such crap. Rock, paper, scissors, really. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently that was one of the best things I could think of. <laughs> so yeah, right, halfway through the game. Stay tuned, everyone. <laughs>